I have to admit, I, I was wrong. When I first heard that ProBizinner 7 would have the ability to live stream within the software, I was less than impressed. I know that lots of churches don't exactly have the greatest computers, and for lots of churches, outdated computer hardware and of course the lack of trained people tend to lead to the majority of technical issues. Hi everybody, I'm Nathan and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. My goal with Crazy Amazing Designs and everything I do is to simply this, help teams and individuals do church and event production well. That's it. So thanks for watching this video. If you ever have any questions, send me an email at crazyamazingnathan at gmail.com and I would love to chat. So when we first started streaming at my church, I began using OBS. This was just before Easter of 2021 and I knew it would do a good job streaming and like I said, I didn't yet see the value of Pro 7 and what it had to offer streaming wise. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you our current streaming setup. I'm not gonna go all the way back and share all the iterations that brought us to this point, but if you want more details from the early days streaming at Orwell Christian Church and the reasons for the decisions that led us here, then send me an email and I'd love to talk about it. So the hardware. So our streaming setup is located at our front of house booth. Our camera mounts to a Manfrotto fluid tripod head. This is mounted to a pole with an adapter that we 3D printed. So we're currently using my C100 Mark II with a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens. We are using a 15 foot HDMI cable to run from the camera mount to the other side of the booth where it plugs into a Blackmagic Ultra Studio Recorder 3G. So this is one of the few places you're ever gonna see me run a long HDMI cable like this. I typically convert to SDI even for a simple run like this, but since the camera has a full-size HDMI and the recorder also has a full-size HDMI port, it actually made the most sense to not convert to SDI. So if you'd like to hear more about this decision and the reasons why I choose to convert most HDMI sources to SDI, then please check out the video I did on that. You can click on the card in the top right. So for those of you currently wondering, yes, we're only using a single camera streaming with one camera. We made that decision because we decided that we would rather do a great job with one camera than do a mediocre job with more cameras. And trust me, I love to sit in front of a video switcher and with a completely filled multi-view monitor and direct a service or some kind of performance. So let's take a look at the two computers running ProBizinner 7 in front of house. What they are doing and where they're at. So our main iMac is doing all the lyrics and is also running tracks from Ableton Live. So song slides in Pro 7 are set up to trigger automatically, which is really nice because we're using ProPresenter and Ableton to run our tracks. So we then have a second computer, which is a MacBook Pro that is handling the streaming. So here is the hardware setup on the streaming computer. This computer has four USB-C ports. The first one is a hardware ethernet connection so that we get a good upload and download speed. Uh, port number two is the camera input from the 3G recorder. And that's just using a USB-C to USB-C cable to plug in the, to the device. Uh, port number three is for power. And number four is an HDMI video output for the TV in our lobby. The TV in our lobby gets a separate output being generated by ProPresenter 7 on this computer independent from the live stream feed. Connected to the main iMac, we simply have a hardware ethernet connection and two USB-C ports that are both connected to the screens. One connected to the main screen and one, the second is the stage display screen. So ProPresenter 7 is really a great tool for live streaming. It turns out, I had no idea. I say this because it gives you the ability to have content playing on the stream without showing that content in the service. Okay, so let me break down what I really mean by that. We have four videos that we play on our stream that don't get played on the screens in the service. This is great for showing online specific content as well as filling space during the service where nothing is happening that needs to be on camera. For example, during offering, while that's being collected, we don't want to show anything from the cameras in the room. So it's great to be able to have a video playing online and then especially with music. So let's take a look at how the streaming is configured in Pro 7 and then we're going to look more at the content we play in the service. In this video, I don't really want to get too deep into the specific things and how they're configured inside of Pro 7, but I do want to show you how I have things set up to stream. So to start, and I've kind of already hinted at this, our streaming computer is generating two output feeds, the one for the stream and then the second one for the lobby TV. So to get started inside of ProPresenter, I have a streaming playlist with three items inside of it. So these three items are A, pre-service welcome, B, the announcement layer, and C, videos with automation. 
So first we have a service welcome. So this contains a welcome graphic that goes on the live stream feed and has a countdown to timer on it. This shows for five minutes leading to the start of the service with a service begins in slide. So next we have B, the announcement layer. This contains one slide, but that one slide has a super important task. This slide brings the announcement slides loop from the main iMac over an NDI feed and sends it to the lobby screen. So this way our table talk, which is our show that we do on our web stream each week, doesn't show in the lobby. The NDI feed that comes from the iMac covers the video on top of the lobby TV because the announcement layer is on top of it. Finally, we have C, videos with an automation. This is the content we click through during the service that shows on the online stream feed. So we have four items that are in this bin, this folder. So we have the table talk show, which plays at the beginning of our service, our invitation video, our offering video, and the post service table talk. So once we play these videos, they will auto advance into the next slide, which shows live video and the NDI lyrics feed from the iMac. The automation involved here is incredible and one of the reasons why Pro 7 is such a great streaming tool. So here's another cool thing. When the Table Talk show is on screen during the start of our online service, I have a stage display feed set up on the streaming computer where the video is playing. Anytime a video is playing, the remaining time is displayed on this stage display screen. So then we're sending the output of the stage display uh, being transmitted over the network via NDI. And then on the iMac, I have that NDI feed coming in onto the stage display feed that we use while the host is speaking. So this timer is displayed and tells the host how much time they have left to speak. The goal is that at five seconds, the tracks are started and the stream goes from the end of the table talk show straight into worship, making the online transition buttery smooth. So that is a high level overview of how we are streaming. Our streaming setup is inherently more complicated than yours might need to be, but with ProPresenter 7 at the heart of our streaming, we have a lot of flexibility with playing online specific content. So if you're interested in more simple streaming setups, then check out my other videos on that. You know, I would love to give you a detailed plan for the ultimate streaming setup for your church or your event, but we, I just can't do that. And that's not the point of this video. The goal with my videos is simply to give you the knowledge to decide if a specific tool, software, or piece of hardware will be the right thing for you. I want you to know how it works so that you can make a decision for yourself, for your church, for your ministry, and pick whatever works best. If you would like to know more about our particular setup or would like to talk about your setup, leave a comment or send me an email and I would love to talk with you. CrazyAmazingNathan at gmail.com. That's the place. Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Adios. If you're interested, please leave the like on the video and please subscribe to the channel. I pour a lot of time and energy into these videos and my ministry, my help goal is to help churches with their ministries and doing production and church tech well. Bye guys, we'll see you next time.